Praise God. Praise God. This is Prophetess Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are all having a blessed day. I am actually in the parking lot at church. Um, You know what? Let me tell y'all something. I, I just feel God so heavily. I've been actually, you know, you can always feel God when you're walking with God, when when you have the spirit of God, um, when you have a relationship with God. So God woke me up about, I don't know, it was four or five one of them hours and God was talking to me about a lot of things about the witchcraft that's going on warlocks witches I mean this is not to put fear in anyone but this is to make you understand what season and time we're in a lot of you're not understanding what's going on sometimes it's who you connected to and what's going on and what you've done or what you haven't done, truth be told. So God was talking to me about the Joshua generation. He's been talking to me about this for about a year. I told you guys for about a year. And I'm going to be on it because we are the Joshua generation. But there's different aspects to this whole thing. So I'm in Joshua. I'm in the car at church. Look, I have church before church. Always, always did. So anywho, I'm in Joshua chapter 7. Okay, and I'm going to start somewhere because if you notice my title, it says... We are the Joshua generation. It is time to take the cursed things from among us. Oh, Lord, they're not going to like you. Like, this is a hard message. You're not going to like it. I'm telling you right now. It's going to feel uncomfortable for those that are listening and those that will listen. I'm telling you it's going to be uncomfortable. Because what God is saying in this hour is that playtime over with. Let me make that thing plain. Playtime is over with. What am I saying? It's time out for fornication in the body of Christ, and yet you're still preaching. It's time out for lying in the body of Christ, and you're still preaching. It's time for you get the drift. If you have any error and sin in your life, your position is to sit down somewhere and get cleansed, get saved for real, get healed for real, and get delivered. What's happening in the body of Christ, you got Christ, excuse me, you got people that are preaching and teaching that are not authorized by God. They may have been at one time, but this is a relationship. And if you don't stay in covenant, there it is, there it is, you've broken covenant. I'm telling you, broken covenant. So let me break that thing down. Let me break it down. So I'm in Joshua chapter 7, and it says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing, for Achan, the son of Karma, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. I'm in Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. This is for the whole world. This is a thus said the Lord. I must read that again. I have to. But the children of Israel, us, yeah, committed a trespass in the accursed thing for Achan, the son of Karma, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zira, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. This is where we at. Okay, break it down. Okay, you got pastors and preachers that are um doing what they're doing. Sinning with the world, touching the unclean thing. I'm just being real. And that is why we're not seeing revival. You cannot have revival. I don't care how much you, 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 you dance, shout, you're anointed. You cannot have revival without repentance first. So let me go ahead and I'm going to break that. Down. I got to break it all the way down. Verse 2 says, And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is besides beth Reven, at the east side of Bethel, and speaking to them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. Now, I'm getting to a point. You're thinking... Okay, because I hear it a lot. Oh, don't judge. Uh oh, that's not our business. I'm about to read to you that it is our business. If you are sinning and you are a leader in the body of Christ, or even just a, a person in the body of Christ, it affects us all. I used to think that too. I do what I do. It, it doesn't, honey, whatever you do affects everyone indirectly or directly. Period. End of story. That's why the body of Christ is in disarray right now. But let me complete this thing. Verse 2, it said, no, verse 3, I read that. Verse 3 says, And they returned to Joshua and, the, and unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ah, and make not all the people to labor tither, for they are but few. Verse 4, it says, But so there went up tither of the people, about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ah. I'm going to go ahead and read because I'm going to break it down in a minute. Verse 5. And the men of I smote of them about 36 men, for they had chased them before the gate. 
Hold on, y'all. I'm in a car, so it's kind of, you know. Even unto Shebahim and smote them in the going down, where for the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Verse 6. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the law into the eventide. He and the elders of Israel and put dust on their heads. Verse 7. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why for hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us in the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? And would God, we have been content and dwell on the other side of Jordan. Verse 8. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs to their enemies? Notice what I said. When Israel turned their backs to the enemies. Verse 9. For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall enround us and cut off our name off the earth. And what will they do unto thy great name? And verse 10. Listen very carefully. And the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. Wherefore thou liest thus upon thy face. Verse 11. Israel had sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken up the accursed thing, have also stolen and disassembled, and also they have put even among their own stuff. In verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel cannot stand before their enemies, but turn their back because their enemies, because they were cursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the cursed thing from among you. That was Joshua 1 through 12. I'm going to say that again. He said, except you destroy the cursed thing before you, verse 12, I will not be with you anymore. That's the word of the Lord. So let me break this thing all the way down. What's happening? God is not with a lot of us. That's why we're not seeing revival. We've touched the unclean thing. We've stolen. We've done this. We're in the house of God. Remind me of Eli's sons. You know Eli's sons? I, okay, let me break that down. So Eli was a man of God, which I'm so glad I brought that up this morning. Because it reminds me of real men and women of God. We love God with all our heart. I mean, we have lived this thing for 20, 30 years. Yet when our children come along, we don't want to tell them nothing because we love them so much. Eli, I don't know why Eli couldn't, but he could not chastise his, his sons. They were sleeping with women. Hmm, sound familiar? Pre Preachers sleeping with their... Don't make me start this morning. I mean, they were doing all kinds of things and Eli could not tell them. The only reason Eli could not tell them because guess what? Once you allow sin... In the place of God, the sanctuary, the church, your home. That's it. Sin takes over. That's why Joshua lost. Joshua lost because of Akon. Akon stole. God said, y'all transgressed. You stole and you did this and you want me to be with you. I'm not going to be with you. And therefore, if I'm not with you, you cannot stand before your enemies. There it is. How are you going to preach and teach with power when God is not with you? Hallelujah. There it is. Except God be with us. We cannot do this. But we want to touch the unclean thing. You want to do this and then go up in the prayer pit. And, and all you're doing is tainting everybody. Everybody. Because, because whatever is in you is coming out of you, which is a spirit. Oh, Lord have mercy. I hope somebody hearing me this morning. That's why I don't play. It, it, it's not. It is crucial in this hour that whatever goes in you must be pure. What am I saying? The covenant has been broken. There it is. We, we, we talking about revival, revival. First of all, you got to restore the covenant. The whole world needs to repent. The whole church. How about that? All of us. Repent before God. Turn back from the ways that are not of God. We know what they are. We've been skipping and dipping for a long time. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going I'm to I'm preach it this morning. We've been skipping and dipping for a long time. I can tell you pastor after pastor after pastor. Y'all going to get mad. Oh, she named me names. It's not like y'all don't know. Y'all just don't want to say nothing. I like them. They preach with power. They so anoint. The devil is a lie. You know they're not anointed anymore. They might have been at one point. But they didn't got so high and mighty. They could do what they do and they don't care. But yet the people are paying for it. Why do you think you're not seeing testimonies? Why do you think you're not seeing people healed? Do you remember back in the day? I don't know how old you are. Young people, old people, whoever on this live. But let me tell y'all something. I remember people was coming in droves in the 80s and the 90s and first latter, the first beginning of 2000s. Where people would come and want to give their life. Y'all don't know this, that slim and nothing? They barely do altar call. You all, am I the only one? I know I'm not the only one. 
I know you see this. Everybody's having a good time. Everybody praising and dancing. But no one's getting saved and healed and filled with the Holy Ghost for real. Not for play. Because you can go to that altar, but, but oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. That's a whole, now, I'm, I'm going to do one when I get out of church, y'all. I got to tell y'all what God told me. But I want it to be separate from this. <sighs> I'm telling you, God been waking me up 3, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock for months. Telling me. <sighs> I know y'all don't like these hard words sometimes. Because it cuts. Because that's what it's supposed to do. But me first, you then you. Trust me. I don't ever just deliver a word and it's for you all. It's for me as well. Trust me. <laughs> God is cleansing out the body of Christ right now, which is a dangerous time because remember, judgment must begin in the house of God. Judgment is in the house of God. Anyone can get it. Me, you, and that famous dog named Boo. You all better repent. I repent every day. God, in word, thought, deed, whatever. God, please, please. Please don't take your spirit from me. Show me the way to go. I am not too proud. Come on, somebody. I am not too proud. Lord, please don't leave me. Lord, please don't take your spirit from me. Lord, please keep me. And if I get out of order, pull me back in. Hallelujah. I don't care how you got to do it. We better start surrendering for real. Stop playing this game. I I'm telling y'all right now. I I'm. Uh, I see why God allowed me to go through so much. I go through so much. I know y'all know that. And I don't, I don't get on here and complain. Sometimes it hurts. That's real because I'm. I'm, I'm a person, <laughs> prophet or whatever. I'm still human. However, I understand why God allows me to go through because he knows I'm going to go through with that thing. And then I'm, I'm going to ask him, okay, God, what was I supposed to learn? What, um, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to teach? What am I supposed to be? What am I supposed? There it is. There's a lesson in tests and trials. There's a lesson in everything we go through. Notice I say go through. You're not supposed to stay there. Go through it. God, what am I to do? What must I do? What must I change? That's, that's real. You don't just go through now. There's a reason. And then sometimes it's for the other person as well. God is correcting and rebuking in this hour. And he loves you because He those that he loves, he chastises. But I'm telling you, this is a crucial hour. Get it together. And quit being under people that you know that are not of God. Because that's all that's doing is tainting your spirit. You must be strong. Notice, Joshua, Joshua didn't do anything. But it was somebody under Joshua. And God wasn't with them. And they got, they, they, them people ran. I mean, they ran. And, and Joshua was like, well, what happened? He said, y'all sinned against me. So I'm not with you. That's the same thing we're experiencing in this hour, whether y'all believe it or not. God is not with most churches. God is not with most pastors. Sorry, not sorry. It's true. God is God is a holy God, holy Bible, holy spirit. God cannot go against his word. I don't care if it's me. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm sinning, I'm sinning. That's real. The anointing would not be, the, not, the anointing won't flow. Let me tell y'all something. Why I stay close to God. I'm not saying I'm perfect. The devil is a lie. I'm going through just like you all. We're all processing just different levels, different devils. But one thing about Deanna Dixon, I'll never go too far. You want to know why? Because I know I, I got to keep my family. I got to keep my daughter. I got to keep my grandson. I got to keep Deanna. Because these warlocks and witches, they're not playing in this hour. The game is up. You all don't see all how they're killing people? That's demonic. That's demons. That's not, that's not just a person. That's a demon. You can't fight spiritual if you are not equipped and have a covenant with God, not Holy Ghost filled. There it is right there. Most people are not filled. They filled with somebody. They ain't the Holy Ghost. Hmm. I'm just keeping it a hundred like I always do. My God, my God, my God. Woo, Jesus, Jesus, keep us, keep us, keep us, keep us, keep us, Lord. Keep us and help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, help us. We need you. We need God in this hour. We need prayer. We need fasting. I'm telling you, we need it. We need it. We need it. We need it. It's not a game. It's not a look. Worship is a lifestyle. And it's not just church. When we come to church, worship is in your home, in your car, praying, getting up. God is going around your house if you got to decree and declare. My family is blessed. My family is healed. My family is delivered. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. None is lost. That's what I pray for my family. I say none will be lost, even the ones that don't like me. Oh, you going to heaven? Mm -hmm. Because none will be lost. I'm going to labor. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to pray. 
Hallelujah. That's our portion. My God, my God, my God. And I got to tell you something. I had stepped out of church in 2015 per God. And yes, it was God. God said, I want to teach you how to be a prophet because no one taught me. I thought after prophetess Juanita Bottom anointed me that God would put me under her, but he didn't. He said, no, I'm going to take you a whole different way. I'm going to do it. I'm going to teach you. And God taught me how to be a prophet. I'm not kidding. And that's why it's not that I don't listen to people. I, I, I listen to the ones that are real. And, and, and I know that was walking with God. But if you're not real, you can't tell me nothing. I'm sorry. And so I'm saying this to say, I heard God say about two weeks ago, I'm bringing back my people to the fold. And I hadn't been in church since 2015. So God said, I want you to go. I want you to join the church. I was like, no, no, I don't. I don't just go into anybody. He said, I'm doing something. So I joined this church, believe it or not. It's different. Y'all know, because y'all know. But I know God is doing something. I said, okay, God. Because when God does something with a prophet, you better believe he, he's getting ready to do something with the whole world. I'm telling you. He's bringing us back together. Do not for, forget the assembling of each other. I know it's a lot of stuff. I'm not looking at the stuff. I'm staying focused. What is the assignment? What is the mission? What does God want me to do? Come on, somebody. Because a lot of you, and the reason why I said that, because I feel a couple, about 20 of you on here. Y'all just stay at home. Y'all That's not going to cut it no more. That's not going to cut it no more. We got to go back. We got to go back. We got to go back to the word. That's not going to cut it. Do not forsake the assembling of each other. You don't have to deal with demons. You, you know, if you don't want to. People that are mean or whatever the case may be. Everybody in, in church is not bad. Everybody in church is not um, out to get you. I, I'm just telling the truth before the Lord this morning. Praise God. Praise God. So, I pray that you caught what I'm saying. Because I'm going to throw it. I'm going to throw it. I have to. Being a prophet is real. It's real, real. It's too real sometimes. <laughs> But I pray, and let me go ahead and say a prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everybody that's listening and everyone that will listen. Father God, I pray that their spiritual eyes are open, especially in this hour. I pray that we all come to a repentant state, Father God. That we rebuild the covenant, Father God, that we have with you, Father God. That we examine ourselves and our lives, Father God. Anything that is not of you, anyone that is not that, that should not be connected to us, Father God. Get them out of our lives, Father God. Let them be excited. Expose, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because God says, I'm doing a new thing in your life. I'm going to rebuild you. You will be that person that I've called you to be, that I've ordained you to be, that I've stained you to be in Jesus Christ. And it is not over. God said, I've not forgotten about you. Quit quit letting the enemy lie to you. The enemy likes to feed us lies. He, that's why I pray over my ears. I only hear God's voice in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. So, Father God, I decree and declare that they are mighty men and women of God. They're being restored as we speak, God, in their spirit, in their mind, physically, mentally, psychology, physically, psychologically, I'm sorry, excuse me, you guys, emotionally, spiritually, financially. Heal your people, God. God is still God, y'all. I'm going to say it again. God is still God. I'm going to say it again. God is still God. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, I decree and declare to be so as a prophet of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Let me tell you something. They can't stop what God is doing in your life. I'm going to say it again. They can't stop what God is doing in your life. They, I'm not going to say that they can't, you know, do a little something, something. Because the enemy is always going to do a little. But God is still God, people. Do, do not be succumb with fear overcome with fear that that's the enemy that's the enemy's greatest challenge right now fear rage that's how people are killing people but those are demons that's demonic i'm gonna start breaking this thing down even more so because god god has me on a a real heavy assignment right now and so y'all already know my mandate is spiritual warfare every preacher is different one teach the word one preach the word one do this one do that the reason why i come like i come Mine is spiritual warfare. Has been there since day one. You know, that's what I do. That's who I am. And they know it. That's why they don't like it. They don't like people that do spiritual warfare. Oh, they nuts. They crazy. I bet you come to me when you need. <laughs> I, I bet you I could help you. I, and I'm not saying it like Deanna's all that. No, I, I know what I carry. So don't think it's an arrogance. I'm not that type of person. The devil is a lie. That's not of God. Arrogance and pride. But we need to know who to call. When we need something, when we need somebody, when we need prayer, we need how to fight. 
And that's what I'm going to start showing y'all more so how to fight these demons. This stuff is real. This is not a game. I'm confused. No, no, I repeat that. I'm not going to say I'm confused. I don't understand how a church can be scared of demons when in the whole New Testament, that's all Jesus did was cast them out and show his 12 apostles how to do it. <laughs> so, but, but you know why people scared? You can't cast out what you like playing with. You can't cast out if you're a pastor, a warlock, uh, or a witch. Yeah, them eyes big because it's real like that. You can't cast. Devil say can't cast out Satan. <laughs> come on, come on. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, I'm going to go up in here, you guys. God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know what time it is. Roll our soldiers, for that is truly who we are. Mm. Yeah. I'm back. What? <laughs> I love y'all. God bless.